Everyone's heard lots about cookies. Um, they're an interest. It's a, it's a funny term. It's an interesting word. Um, people see them, and increasingly, what you'll see is you'll see that little window pop up on websites in Europe, which says we use cookies to enhance the user experience. And please click that you accept this. So why is that window there? What's happened? Well, cookies are great at enhancing the user experience, and worth talking a little bit about what that means. And, but they're also obviously there as a little bit of a warning. So are they good or are they bad? Let's start by what are they? Well, the way in which underlying World Wide Web works is that essentially it's a distributed system, okay? Which means that there are places that hold information and there are things that ask for that information. So your computer, say, which would look a little bit like this with you, would say, please give me something, it would respond and say, here you go. So if you imagine a page in, on here that says, hello, the information for that page would come over here and would appear on your screen. And we've done this lots of times. Some machine, say, in your house, is asking a machine in Australia for this information. The very first protocols, the very first means by which this is done, took a very simple means of doing this. What they decided was that they would be what's called stateless. So this machine would simply say, it's a new page, here's a page, here's a page. What that meant for, for you as a user would be if you went away, came back, had a cup of tea, and then went to the exactly the same place and asked for the same information, there would be no knowledge whatsoever about you having done it before, which became a little bit silly. So how then do you do the little shopping carts? There's often a little, a little shopping cart in the corner. And as you go through and you buy things, it puts things in the cart. Well, how would you know that if you don't remember who's asked for the information and what they've asked about? So that's what cookies are about. The world now changes, so let's now put a cookie in. So imagine you're on this page. You say, give me the page, and you get the page with all the details. But you also, within that, will have little tiny files called cookies. Cookies allow this machine to remember information about the last page it gave you. Which means, as you purchase things, they can be added to this, and so that when you go away and come back, that information is remembered. So preferences can be set, you can decide things, so layouts of things can be, can be done, which used not to happen before. So the whole thing from end to end gets called a session. So it's no different than putting your shoes in to be repaired and the man gives you a ticket and then you go back and you use the ticket and you get the right pair of shoes back. So this all sounds good, this enhances everything. But they have started to become really quite controversial as well. The real issue about this, actually you probably best have a think about a web page here. Many web pages that you go to give you information for free. And have you ever wondered how people can do that? Why can you get something for nothing? Well, what happens often, and increasingly you'll see this, is you'll see a web page has been a bit like this, and then there'll be the content that you're looking at there. Okay, so in my case, this would be stuff about football. Okay, so I'd be looking up my favorite team's football scores, but I'll notice all these scrolling ads around here. The adverts, are generating revenue for that page in order to do that. And that's where cookies get controversial. The example I've given you is what's called first party cookies, when one party is giving an information to another. What actually happens here is rather interesting because you see in one page, but actually what's happening is a range of things. This could be the part where you're asking for this page and you're getting the content, but all these adverts could be coming from completely different parts of the world, and often are. Okay, so these can all, are all companies which are selling up the ad. That means that the web page, although it might be www.myfavoritesite.com, 
all these other sites are also putting information into that page. So this can enhance the experience by remembering who you are by putting a little file down. All of these, when they put the information down, are also putting a cookie down. So now, all of these advertising agencies also remember that you've been on this page. So these guys can start to talk to each other and then form an advertising network, which can start to remember your preferences and where you've been on the World Wide Web. This is basically known as tracking or cookie tracking. These third party cookies allow the advertisers to figure out, have you seen this advert before? And even to sequence a number of adverts so they can decide that some adverts and some things that people purchase, they purchase after seeing a sequence of adverts and they can do that sequencing because they've remembered where those things are. We probably do need to know just how much people know about where you browse, how you browse and what your browsing purchases are. Because many, many millions or billions of sessions can be analysed. So are you the person who browses in a particular way? Are you somebody who purchases things in a different way? So all of these cookies allow little trails that can be knitted together and analysed to understand your behaviour. And that's why the EU introduced as part of their privacy measures this thing called the cookie law. And the cookie law said, well, you've got to inform people that you're capturing information about them and then allow them to opt out. So those little screens that appear do that. There are still problems here. One of the problems here is the EU have legislated for this. So this has been browsers in the EU. If you try and go to the same sites, you probably won't see those things, okay? But the interesting thing about those is it's either cookies off or it's cookies on. Many people talk about perhaps what you want to allow is one party cookies, but not third party cookies. As always with computers, these things can all be done. And even in the current systems, you can do most of these. They're very difficult to present to users and very difficult for users to find. So, so you will, if you really want to dig down deep, be able to do this, but it's not quite as obvious. There's also quite a lot of scare stories about cookies. Cookies are not programs, okay? When cookies go onto your machine, they don't run as code. So that means they can't really give you a virus, which is be one of the dangers that people would have. They can't, um, in and of themselves, take over elements of your screen or even your webcam. The worry everyone has, though, is the start of allowing all of that to happen without anybody noticing. And there's been quite a lot of controversy about this and, and people don't realise that. So if I ask you the question, I know, I'll, do it, I'll ask you it now. So how many of these cookies and many third parties do you think there'd be on a site? On one, on one page, one site. Um, I'm going to think you've simplified that, but you've got three or four, I'd say maybe um, six or seven. Okay, so, so, so the, the interesting thing is every one of those gives you a tiny amount of money.